Hey everybody, it's Tiffany from Tiffany's Paper Shop and I just wanted to bring you a fun, quick little project that you could make for a friend for Christmas. So, let me show you. I did a video a while back during the summer, I think, where I showed how to make this little traveler's notebook out of this little Dollar Tree photo album. Okay, so you don't have to do any laminating. You don't even have to make a cover. The cover's already made for you. It makes it pretty quick. You don't need any special tools. I use, you know, my paper trimmer and a corner rounder, and you need a hole punch. But, yeah. That's about it. So, I um, also used the little three pack of notebooks that you get from the Dollar Tree as well. There are three little cute little notebooks in here for a dollar. So, basically two dollars for your, you know, your uh, supplies. Well, you'll need some paper too. I do have this paper collection in my shop. Of course, I hope the lighting's okay. I've never done a video late at night before, but I was, I just, yeah, I just had this urge to do this today. So I kind of threw it together last minute. So if it seems crazy, that's probably why, but this is A Perfect Winter from Echo Park Paper Company by Lori Whitlock. She lives close by me, so that's fun. Okay, I use most of this paper already. Obviously, it's my favorite. That's what I did the cover with. It's got this gorgeous, like, yeah, winterberry, I don't know, cute floral with snowflakes in it on the back. Let me sh just run through these papers real quick. This is what I have left of the snowman. Oh, I did make my my little fi folder, file folder, pocket folder with that. Is that cute? Okay, polka dot. Some more pretty flor little flowers, little winter berry flowers, and a cute uh, houndstooth red. Um, okay, and I used a piece of this already. I'll show you the. I used this to cover a notebook. Actually, there like there were two squares that I used, and I just folded it in in half. Well, let's see the back of that. It's like snowballs. Oh, isn't this gorgeous? Look at those snowflakes. I love the different colors. Oh, plaid, so pretty plaid. Sticker, full-size sticker sheet. I love this little wreath with those flowers in it. Okay, some more cut-aparts. That's cute, like a cable knit sweater background isn't that adorable got everything in it some candy cane stripe there's like a blizzard oh, whoop. <laughs> some cute owls and they've got a border page I actually used this collection to do, I did a winter shadow box last year. It turned out so adorable. Isn't that pretty? Okay, I think that was most of them. I might have used one or two up, but okay, let me show you what I've done for my winter simple TN. And I actually just tucked it as a die cut snowflake into you know the inside pocket. It's a fun little touch. So here's my first notebook. And then here's the second one I was talking about that I cut that out of the out of this cut apart sheet. So that's the front. Let me slide this out real quick. I do have these um, cute pom pom, uh, cute paper clips available in my shop if you want to add those on um so it's got this cute bear on the back of it so i just folded 
the two, you know, it's one solid piece. I cut the two squares out, the two, they're not squares, <laughs> rectangles, four by sixes out. Folded it in half, and that's my cover, voila. And I cut it, it, it was a tiny bit short because I just did the four by sixes, and you need about, well, I'll explain that later. You need it to be a little bit longer, but I covered it up with my trim. I knew I was going to use some trim somewhere. It's my little pocket folder that I haven't glued yet, and then my third. And then in the back, you'll have a few like scrapbook pages left or just um, pockets to put stuff in. So isn't that fun? All right, so let me show you how I made it. And if you haven't used Traveler's Notebooks before, they're so fun. Like I showed you, you can just, like if you fill up a notebook or journal, you can totally pull it out and put a new one in, you know, just cover it, put another piece of paper over it for the cover. Or if you decide you want to change it up for another season, just, you know, put different paper over the covers. There's so many things you can do with Traveler's Notebooks. It can be like a brag book, it can be for scrapbooking, bullet journaling, budgeting, spiritual notes, or studying. You can put a fitness tracker in it, of course a planner, meal planning, yeah, you can do sketching in it. There's so much fun, I love mine. Okay, let's see where to start. Let's cover the notebooks first. I've already cut two, and I'm going to show you real quick on my third one how exactly I cut it to make it the easiest. Let's see, which paper did I want to use? I think I will use, I think I'm going to use this one. And so you'll get two, you can get two covers out of each, you know, 12 by 12 paper. I've done a couple of them already, so. And I don't have another, obviously there's only one of these on the sheet, so. I'm going to do something different in this one. I'm going to dry this paper. So, grab my paper cutter. And, now I like to save as big of a scrap as I can. Because it will come in handy when you're doing either the spine or these back little, you know, photo pages. Because they are a little bit taller, you can see. You want them to be, you want them to cover that, and I haven't glued that in, but you'll want them to go all the way down so there's not too much white showing, for me anyway. Um, so that needs to be a little bit longer than the six inches, so you don't want to just cut your whole paper in half if you want to, you know, optimize your scraps. So what I like to do is, so, so ordinarily you just cut it in half this way, and this would be your your book, but I like to cut the side, and I love this trimmer because you can fit your whole paper in here without cutting off your UPC strip. It drives me crazy when I have to stop and do that. Okay, let me think. So, your to cover your notebooks, it needs to be eight and an eighth wide because it's gotta go around the little spine. So, you're going to cut off, you know, just under four inches, so um, you're gonna cut off um, three, oh, I don't even know my measurements, but an eighth of an inch less than four inches. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So just cut that off and that's your scrap. So rather than have two, having two six inch scraps. All right. And then just cut six inches. And these notebooks are like a tiny smidgen smaller than six inches. So you're you're good if, you know, one of these is a tiny bit taller than the other one. And then all you need to do is, and I like to look at my notebooks because some of them, they're not perfect. Some of them, see this corner's a little bit less rounded. So just, I don't know, I just pay attention. It, <clears throat> I feel like I need to um, do it a little less rounded. I'll put it all the way in and then I'll slide it up just a touch before I punch it. Oh, and that's the wrong side, sorry. <laughs> I should remember, I even have my half inch side marked so I don't have to stop and try to read the little words on the side with my 
eyes that don't work as good as they used to. Okay, so just round the corners. And there's your cover. You just cut three of those out and you're pretty much finished. Then you just need a spine. So, and this is easy. I just rip the cover right off of it and replace it with with my cute new cover. Throw that away. And there we go. I even think it would be a really cute gift just to cover three notebooks and, you know, tie a bow around it. You'd have to, I do show in my other, in another one of my videos how to like punch holes. And it turned out so cute. I punched holes here and tied ribbon through it. Some of my, you know, my seam binding ribbon and tied a little bow here. They turned out really cute. Okay, there's one cover, and then I've got got this one already pulled off. So, and that that's the beautiful thing about um, Traveler's Notebook. You don't have to attach the back because the elastic holds them in. So there's one, two. Pull this one off. It is a little bit dark. Sorry about the lighting. I just had to get this done. Isn't this buffalo plaid so cute and just wintry? I love the grays. Okay. All right. So there's your three notebooks. Voila. And then you'll want something. You'll have four strings of elastic to slide things into. So. Let's see, I need to make a folder. Where did I put that folder I was showing you guys? Oh, I have to look through. Okay, so there it is. Okay, so the folder, I cut these out with my Cricut. But they're so easy. Oh, actually this one, I did not cut out with my Cricut. This is the one I made to show you how to make one. This one, I cut out with my Cricut and it's got this cute little tab on it. So makes it kind of fun, which you could always add a tab to it. If you have a tab puncher or any kind of a tab sticker or anything. So all I need, this is really easy. All I need to do is cut a square of paper that's eight inches by eight inches. And that, like I said, I like to optimize my scraps, so I'm just going to cut my 8 inch square out of this paper and save all the, all the outside work. I'm kind of crazy like that. <laughs> and then I'll have that much that I can do whatever I need to with, either way. Okay, that's easy, right? Now, if you have a scoreboard, it comes in handy, but if you don't have one, no worries. All you need to do now, now you'll want to pay attention if your paper has, it's directional. If you, you don't want to go going a certain way, you'll want to make sure the top is at the top. I'm just going to score, well, it doesn't matter with this paper. I'm going to score it in half. It's eight inches, so I'm going to put it on four inch mark. If you have a bone folder, great. You can use a, one of these, is it a stylus? Is that what it's called? I don't remember. Um... Sorry, this mess drives me crazy. If you don't, oh, I've even used like a fork, the tines of a fork. You can use your scissors, open them up like this. Let's see if I'm at four still, yes. And just, it's a little bit harder to feel where it is, but just slide it through like that. Oh, I might have pushed too hard. But, oh, well, it worked really well actually. All right, so that's folded in half that way, and then you're going to turn it the other way. And this would be your top over here. If your paper was directional and you're going to make a two-inch pocket, I'm just going to use my bone folder, score it at two inches. Is that two inches? It doesn't look... Yeah, okay. All right, and then fold that up. And the Echo Park paper folds really nice, so... 
I usually like to, when I'm doing something like this, I'll usually fold it backwards first. You've probably seen me do that. I didn't do that very straight. <laughs> but this part paper folds really nicely. You don't get the cracking on your folds. Okay, and that's your little folder. Isn't that easy? All you need to do now is unfold it. And then you're going to want to just fold it. So it's folded in half like that. You take your scissors and starting, if you can see the fold line across here, you maybe can't, but I can, thank goodness. I did not do a very good job scoring that straight, but it will be good enough. You know, if it's perfect, they're not gonna know that it's handmade, right? <laughs> And all you want to do is cut, so if you can see here, there's a little V cut out there. So just cut a little V shape, starting right at your, don't cut on the score line, just cut right below it, like that. My phone is ringing, I'm not going to answer it, okay? And then all you have to do is put a little bit of glue on these edges right there. And stick it together like that. And then I like to round all the corners. I'm just going to use the, the quarter inch on these, I think. I'm doing both. Oh, that was not the quarter inch job. I lied. Just kidding. It's fine. It's fine. It'll match the other ones. I don't know why I like to do the quarter inch on these, but I'm going to do the quarter inch on the inside. You like to round the inside corners because that helps it stay in um, in the elastic and also keeps it from getting munched right there by your elastic. So pretty cute, isn't it? All right, do I want to use that one or my snowman one? Oh, those snowmen are cute. They're also cute. You know you can always add an extra. I'm just gonna use them all. <laughs> An extra, I'll show you when I get, you can always put a folder inside of your, one of your other little journals. Okay, now let's do the, your main cover part. Okay, you want to pull that beautiful paper out of your front and back and then this is the fun part you get to rip all these out now I'm gonna keep you can keep as many as you want in the back I'm gonna keep three or four let's say four three four and then I'm gonna start ripping and usually let's see usually you can rip a couple at a time I'm gonna start with one but they're pretty easy to rip out as you can see so I'll do this quickly, but I wanted you to see how to do it. Okay, now I'm going to try two at a time. Yep. Okay. So go, you, it goes pretty quick. And there's your center. Keep going until you get where you're holding your last four or however many you might want there always fill the back up with photos if you want you know six or whatever okay if you've got anything that looks really good if you got anything sticking out there you can just trim it a little bit with your scissors but that looks great and now this is my own original idea you guys I was so proud of myself when I came up with this and I've got a lot of views on my I'll link below the video for this one Okay, um, yeah, got a lot of, quite a few views on that one. Um, now you need to make your spine, and how I do that is you'll need a six and a half inch strip of paper, so that's where it will come in handy to cut your, you know, to make your scraps as long as they can be. So if they're cut six inches, it's not going to be long enough. This is my spine I cut out with my Cricut, but it's pretty easy to just cut a six and a half by one inch strip of paper. And then what you can do is you can either measure 
you know, measuring a half an inch and about an eighth of an inch down and make a little X. So you can see the X and then punch the hole with, let's see. I have this uh, handy dandy, we are memory keepers. It's, a, it's an Isla punch but it's, and it's got a, a bigger hole and a smaller hole. The smaller hole is the one that I use to make my holes. I also have, let's see, here it is. I also have this, it's um, EK Success hole punch and it cuts, it punches through thick, like, um, um, you know, mat board or um, what's the, not cardboard, but, oh, I can't think of the name, you know, the heavyweight, chip, chipboard, that's the word. <laughs> So, and that's a really, good, that's a good sized hole too. Either one of those will work. Or if you have like an anywhere, you know, eyelet punch. And so, another way you can do it is just fold this in half. Um, if you wanted to make yourself a template, fold it in half and make a little mark there. Okay, and then fold from there, fold that in half and make a little mark there. And then fold it in half that way and make a little mark there. And then punch your holes and then you could fold it there and duplicate the end so you've got both ends done and I probably explained it a little bit better in my other video if you want to if you if that's not making sense you can go back and watch that but please um, comment below if you have questions or if I'm not making sense I'd like to know yeah if you have questions okay now you're gonna need some packing tape let's see so just some of this stuff hopefully you've got some around your house and I, I, maybe, there's probably other things you could use, like maybe some of the laminating stuff that doesn't, you know, doesn't take heat. And all I do is, I try to get it right on the edge, and I, and I bring it up so I don't have fingerprints on it, but I try to get it on one side on the edge. And this is hard because I don't want to get my head in the video too bad. I hate it when I do that. You can see the top of my head. Anyway, that's kind of close. And there we go. That'll protect your spine. Then I'm just going to trim it around it. If you get it right on the one inch, then you only have to trim, you know. Don't have to trim that edge. That makes it easier. I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving. I'm excited. My, my grown kids and grandkids are coming over. All right. There's your spine. And now, let me think. What do I need next? I need, you'll need some score tape. Oh, you, you'll want to put that on the back. Of your spine you can use pretty much any size you'll just have to you know if it's a thin one you'll just have to put several rows on it if you got one inch that's perfect I have some one inch somewhere but I'm not going to look for it <laughs> Maybe I should cut it on this side where I can see it okay, that side and then this side I don't know if I'm even in camera. I apologize if I was out right there. Make sure you right on the outside edge so it's going to adhere really well. The center doesn't matter as much. I'm trim that off. Oops. Okay, just like that. Now you want to burnish that down if you have your bones holder that works really well if you don't just use the handle of your scissors like that okay no big deal just make sure it's on there really well and then it makes it easier to get your backing off if it's adhered really well whoops okay let's see and then all i do is stick it Okay, good. I'm gonna move this out of the way for a minute. Okay, this is, let's see. 
and it doesn't really matter which is the front. Well, it does matter because you've got your white pages on the back. You don't want them to be on the front. So this is your front. I'm just going to flip it over like that. And you can see this. Um, I'm going to just line my spine up with this um, kind of dotted edge line right here. Best you can. And <laughs> see what I can do it here? Perfect. And rub it down really well. That's your spine. Use the back of your scissors. Back of a butter knife, whatever you've got will work. Just rub it on there really good. Okay, and then you need to score. If you have a scoreboard, great. If you don't use your paper trimmer, and I'm just going to score right outside of that, the edge of my uh, spine. And score it pretty hard, pretty firmly on that side, and then open it up. And do the other side. It's a little trickier because it's more bump, fluff, fluff, more <laughs> puffy. <laughs> Try to make sure you've got it on there straight. Actually, I think I'll flip it over. Yeah, that's a better idea. Let's do that. Flip it over. Okay, yeah, it's much better. Score it really well. And then, just gonna fold that down and give it a good crease. And it doesn't matter if your front and back aren't totally even. It's not a big deal. If you're worried about it, you can try to make it more even, but usually my front is a little shorter than my back, which is fine. Okay. Hope I did it the right. Which way does it go? Oh, it's still the way all the way around. Okay. Now you need to punch through those holes again. Because you've got, you know, all the layers. That's not what I need. So I'm going to need my glasses for this, I think. So you see those little holes in this halfway dark room and just punch the holes again. Might not might be a little bit tricky to punch all the way through everything, but this handles it like a charm. And this one will too, if you have this one I have sold this in my shop before but I don't yeah I'm out of those so and it will as you can see it punches right through all of that your leftover pocket pages okay trim the other ends real quick oops that was low I can't see because I've got sticky stuff stuck in there so let me use my my what's it called <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. Can't think of names right now. Okay, that's better. Okay, good. All right, that's your cover. No measuring. Well, just your little spine. Okay, now let's see. You'll need some of your some elastic cording. Um, I cut a piece somewhere. Here it is. And I cut a piece. You'll need about 25 inches. And so that, that is really frayed. If it's frayed, you'll want to trim it. Okay. Now we'll start from the top left hole coming from behind, from the back. Just poke it through there. Okay, pull that down, and I like to leave about, I think that's probably about six inches or so, five, six, seven inches there. 
Okay, and then bring it all the way straight down to the bottom hole on the left. Just like that. Okay, straight down. Now, you'll take your long piece and go back through the back again. You're always coming from the back to the front. Up there, and then straight up to your top center hole. Whoa! <laughs> Sorry about that. That straightened out a little bit. I've got a little kink there. Okay, you want to make them snug, but not too tight because you don't want it to pull on your plastic and make it wonky. Now back through the back. Let's see if I can do this. Still show you without getting my arms in the way. Through that hole on the right. And then all the way down to the bottom hole on the right. So straight down again. Now, this is the tricky part. You're going to need to go back through that center hole. So this is what the back will look like. You'll just have loop, two loops. And it, you may need to trim again if it's all frayed. Okay, so this is what I do. I hold the two on your left and pull them over so that you can get this back through that center hole. All right, Let's see if I can get it in there. Yep, I did it, yay. So that's what your back will look like, just two loops through those three holes. All right, and then this one, the, the piece that you had left from the beginning at the top, you're gonna do the same thing. You're going to pull these two over to the right and then stick that through. See if I can get it in there without trimming it. I'm almost. It's really not that hard. I'm just in an awkward angle. Okay. Now, what I need to do is tie those two ends together. Let's see if it looks. Okay. Looks good. We'll just make like a square knot. Not too, don't pull it too tight. Just nice and snug like that. And I like to leave an inch or so in case you decide you need to adjust it. But that's all you need to do. And then you can, and then also you can either, in this one I've just used the elastic again to use as the, um, hold the cover closed and in this one I used my seam binding ribbon and then you have to tie it every time so either way works I'll show you how I did the ribbon in a second but first I'm going to show you the elastic binding it and you'll need just enough to wrap around your book with a couple a few inches extra on each end. So I'm going to cut that. It's about, whoops, that much. And then you will. Let me know, you guys, if you want me to list like things like the the seam binding ribbon on my shop or. Or this elastic cording, things like that, that you might want. Okay, and then, oh, I forgot to punch my hole. Let's see, let me grab my other punch. If you don't have anything to punch a hole with, just use whatever, you know, whatever you can find. A big needle, make the hole as big, you know, just keep making it bigger. I have this punch that I, it's like an anywhere punch that I've had for years and years. I've been scrapbooking you guys for like 30 years, so I have all the stuff, but this is, if you have an anywhere hole punch, that will be great, but I'm just going to, and this hole doesn't have to be exact, exactly in the center, if you're, you know, making it from scratch. It's not a big deal. Just as close as 
you know, you can eyeball it. But I've got a punch. Sorry, I'm knocking the camera again. Got to punch through that plastic sheet. So let's see if I got it. It feels like it. Yes, I do. All right. Put that out of the way. And so, so you've got your... So I just tied it around itself this time. Different kind of knot. And then you'll pull the center, squoosh that together. And get your center hole and stick that little center loop. Squish it together and stick it through the, your hole. As easy as that. And that knot will hold it in place. And you'll want to make sure that you've got, after you put your books in, you'll be able to tell better. And that might be a little tight. <clears throat> you don't want it to be too tight because it's going to pull on your plastic cover. But maybe I'll loosen it up just a touch. But actually, I'm just going to <laughs> show you the ribbon. And you can use any kind of ribbon for this. So I just love my seam binding ribbon. You'll want about a foot. You can do with like so wrap around your your book, and you'll want about a foot, a little less than a foot, probably 11 inches on both sides to tie your bow. So let's see. I'm gonna do. Let's see. 10, yeah, that's about 11 inches. And trim it to a point. And then, oh, I don't have, let me grab my stapler really quick. This is, this is just how I figured out how to do this. If you guys have a better idea, let me know. But I just make an X right in the center of my ribbon. I just Put a staple in it and then I turn it and put another staple across it so it's an X that will kind of hold it I know <laughs> it's not rocket science but kind of hold it in place in your book and you know you're not going to want to pull on it too hard but then you'll just want to get those try to put those little points into the get them together to get them to go in that little hole right there. See if we can get them both through. How amazing! Okay, and then hopefully those staples will hold it in place. So just don't pull real hard on it. Okay, awesome. There's your cover. Now you can slide. This is a fun part. And then this again. Let's just slide your little cute little notebooks in. So I've got my extra folder in the middle of this one. Just slide them all in there together like that. It kind of sticks out a little bit. You can trim it if it if it bothers you. Let's see, what do I want next? I think I'll do this red one next. So just find the center. And, you know, if you didn't have a, a paper cutter, paper trimmer, you, and you, after you pull the, you know, the cover off, you could totally just trace around that and, and cut it out with your scissors. Trace, you know, onto your cute pattern paper. Okay, and then these two in the middle, doesn't matter which one you use because they kind of like overlap each other. All right, so I'm going to put my little folder in, other little folder, and you can rearrange this however you want, however you like it. They do have some little, some planners at the Dollar Tree that I think they're about this size. I need to try one. 
I have one right here somewhere. Okay, find the center again. Let's see. It's easiest to hold it this way. And find that little... Oh, I didn't quite get it. Let's see. Oh, where is the center? <laughs> Shouldn't be that hard. There it is. There's the staples. Slide that in there. Okay, now you'll have scraps. If you want to fill up your... I just did a couple of scraps back here. I just did the front and the back. You'll want to, for, for sure, put some of the cute on the back because that's your back cover. And if you want to put something in here, I keep thinking it would be so cute to put some sequins and glitter or whatever in here. You need to do that before you slide in your books. Just, just you know, there's... Because you've got to get into here. And then you'd have to seal it up somehow. Some way that's not sticky. If you have one of those, um, what are those things? Oh, I've got one downstairs. What are those things called that you can, it like melts your plastic, your page protectors, so you can make pockets. I mean, you know, seal up your pockets. I can't think of what they're called. Somebody help me out. Comment below. <laughs> so there we go. You've got a full sheet of stickers if you want to decorate it up. I was thinking it would be. Oh, there's some cute snowman and stuff on here. Let me show you the sticker sheet again. And then also like this um, sticker edge would be really cute to... Oh, I didn't put my pom-pom trim on. But for the pom-pom trim, you can either... Let's see if I have a piece here. I do. Let's see, where should I put my pom-pom trim? You can use like... If you have some white rickrack, if you can't find pom-pom trim. I just thought this was so cute because it looked like, you know, little snowballs. And you can put that on any, like I said, on this one, I don't know if I explained that very well, but I think this is so cute. But so I, so it was just two of the four by sixes that I cut out both together, if that makes sense. So it's one solid piece and folded it in half. It's got a little bear on the back. So it was only eight inches instead of eight and an eighth. So it was a tiny bit short to cover the full notebook. That's why I added the trim on it. Um, if you have some kind of a little scallop edge die or something like that, I do that sometimes with my traveler's notebooks and I just think it looks so cute. Let's see, I've got my little Christmas Christmas one, winter one here. And it's and I've got I've got a video on this too if you haven't seen it, but so I've got my pom-pom trim here and I did, you know, a sticker. This is a sticker, so it's pretty similar to the sticker. Just cut it in half and put some on the front and some on the back. So that would be really cute to add in there somewhere. And I've got some, another die. Well, I did this with my Cricut, but anyway, I think it's so fun to dress up the edges. It adds so much to your traveler's notebooks, but look at all those cute stickers. There's another cute bear and all the cute you know, wording, pretty adorable. So you can either just glue this on or I have my, I've got some pretty thin score tape that I like to use. And usually I'll just use glue cause I don't like to use up my score tape for things like this. Let's see, where do I want to put this? Oh, I think I'll put it here with the words. You can put it anywhere you want. Just gonna put a little bit on the edge of this. Mm. Pretty close to the edge. Trim that off. And burnish it down. Let's see, it's kind of hanging off the edge there and I don't want it to get stuck to other things. So trim that off. See if I can get the backing off. Oh, that was easy. Usually I struggle with that and it drives me crazy. And then you'll want to attach it so that it's, I like to have the edge peeking out and it's kind of tricky. Just lightly push down. 
I'm going to flip it over so I can see if the edge is showing. So I like to see the edge peeking out like that. Yeah. Okay. A little bit tricky to do it backwards and on camera. Okay, so you can see what I mean about having the edge show. And this piece I cut to the right side, so I didn't need to, you know, cover anything up with it. But isn't that cute, you guys? Oh, I love. I am so addicted to paper. It's not even funny. <laughs> and let's see, we need to put a snowflake in there, don't we? I just have these, this little package of snowflakes. I'll just stick a small one in there. Let's see if I can do it with my books already in here. That's going to be hard. I'm going to pull this one out real quick. Voila. Punch that little center hole, maybe. And wouldn't it be cute to put some? I need to figure that out. Some sequence in there. One of these days I'll do that. Okay. Let's see if I can get it down into the corner. All right. Maybe I should fill up the back page with something. Oh, what do I have here? I want to use some scraps. Oh, some. Let's see. There's some. There's a good scrap. Oh, that's probably only six inches, but let's see. Okay. Hmm. Let's show you what I'm doing here. I'm just thinking, thinking out loud here, if you don't have six inches, and you'll have to, if your scrap isn't six inches, you can always add your UPC border onto it, but you're going to have to cut, you know, into the center. So decide if you want to do that or not. But, or you can turn it the other direction and cut a piece that's, you know, six and you'll need it. I think you'll need it to be about six and a quarter tall. I think I'm trying to decide what I want to put there. Let's take a piece of this. I've got a good piece of this, so I'm going to cut off the UPC strip, I guess. Try six and a quarter. I'll see if that works. And then you'll have a nice piece left to make a card. Let's see. I probably should have just measured it. And I've got this cute. I already showed you the back of that, didn't I? Slide that into there and see if that fits. Oh, that's actually the perfect. Perfect size. Cute, cute, cute. Love that. Isn't that darling? Thank you. <laughs> Give me some love. I really appreciate it when you guys comment. You know, even if it's a question or whatever. Yeah, and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I do lots of paper crafting videos, but I also do tons of... Um, Tuesday morning videos, um, craft hauls, and you guys, I have to tell you, I did go to Tuesday morning this morning, and they said that the lady at the, you know, at the counter, she thinks that the trucks were delayed because of some winter storms, 
and I couldn't find anything I wanted there. So I'm hoping, you know, that maybe their truck will come in tomorrow, but I seriously did not find one thing I wanted to buy. It was sad. Okay, this pom-pom trim would be shown off so much better if you have some cute, you know, paper in this white. <laughs> but yeah, if you, <laughs> if you wanna stop watching now, you are more than welcome to. Let's see if I have a scrap there. I'm just even going to stick this here for a second so you can see what I mean. Okay, now the pom-pom trim shows up so much better. Isn't that cute? Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your support. Stay safe. Take care and have a happy Thanksgiving. Thanks so much, you guys. Bye-bye.